Okay. The clerk found it suspicious. She called the sheriff's office. We responded there. The car was stolen, and then we started uh, looking in the area, identified all the uh, car breaks that were happening. Um, we we did do a geofence search warrant. We got phase one. We got a device in the area during that time. Uh, it's a spectrum device. We send the subpoena there. Um, I mean, if it's a device by spectrum, we're going to get subscriber information soon. So hopefully we'll make an arrest on those. So the lead is we were able to ping somebody's phone hit in there, and that's what we're working on to go back to go backwards on that. Okay. There's some of the videos of uh, of these. While the first trend is adults, the second trend is juveniles, and then you'll see where we have um, a couple of gun incidents involved. Especially with the summer coming up, and we have some plans for that as well. A lot of these cars are left unlocked, which is the other issue. Okay. Okay, that will bring us into the Group A offenses for crimes. Uh, starting off with something that kicked off that Easter weekend, which was uh, the Merrimack. Uh, we had the defendant who uh, is a juvenile, 17 years old, uh, chased some other juveniles around, apparently had some issues going on with, and fired one shot towards the ground, but did not hit anyone. Uh, the victim was pistol whipped during the altercation. Uh, it seems to be an issue going on. One of the, uh, most everybody on here, it goes from 17 to 13 years old. Um, these are young kids, and this is what they're starting to get involved in right off the bat. This was cleared by arrest. We did make an arrest on this. The deputies did a really good job getting in there and uh, being able to solve this immediately. Recovered a firearm? Yes. Anything come back with that firearm? Not on, uh, not this one. The next case. Right. Yep. I was going to ask you, when you guys do that, do you guys find out that these guns are coming from the parents? Uh, we trace we trace all the guns. Uh, we're going to talk about the next one where the gun was used in two shootings in Sanford that was recovered here when he was in a shooting here. Uh, some of them are stolen, and some of them come back, no record found mm -hmm. as to where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, this incident, everybody's from Deltona. This next incident, you got a crossover from Deltona and, and the land we're going to talk about now. Uh, yes, aggravated assault on Deltona Boulevard. Um, the victim attempted to de-escalate an altercation that he saw at knew the juvenile. Uh, but this angered the defendant, and she began throwing punches at the victim. Uh, the defendant went to, the ve went to her vehicle she arrived in and retrieved a sharp blade and advanced towards the victim. She was 16 years old. That she was arrested uh, as a result of this case. So the next, uh, we'll have two DV aggravated batteries, which were CBA'd, uh, 24 simple domestic violence uh, that were CBA'd, four that were filed with the state attorney, which means we just couldn't find them, and we're, we... we give it to the state to determine if they're going to uh, file charges or not. This brings us over to page seven. We'd have a uh, forcible sex offense, a non-forcible sex offense, one was CBA'd, one was TOT'd. Uh, next two simple assaults were CBA'd, which is cleared by arrest. Uh, which brings us to a stalking on Abigail. Uh, the victim uh, was sent approximately 100 text messages from her ex-boyfriend, some stating that he was going to kill her. Uh, this was CBA, and uh, CID was able to get a warrant so we could get him and get him into custody. This brings us to the next page. Uh, burglary on Hollywood uh, Boulevard. This is going to be to the Epic Theaters. Uh, the defendant was observed attempting to defeat the locking mechanism of an, of an exterior door at the above location. He said he wanted to go watch a movie, but he did not want to pay for it. This was cleared by arrest. Next burglary at, uh, on Crawford Court. Uh, the victim was in her home when the defendant defeated the lock to her screen door and entered her home without permission. The defendant requested to get back together with him and became angry when she would not, resulting in a physical altercation. This is an ex-boyfriend. This was cleared by arrest. Uh, next burglary on a Oasis, uh, the victim advised he noticed forced entry to his front door. This was TOT over to CID and cleared by arrest. This is a dangerous trend. 
Go ahead, Julian. Yeah, so we, uh, we did an area canvas. We identified the uh, juvenile. Um, he is born in 2010, which is pretty young. He's uh, uh, 14 years old. Um, ultimately, we, we arrested him. Um, but yeah, you, you, you're he, he, right. There's a TikTok challenge to go up to homes and kick the front door in. That's a good way to get yourself shot and killed. And that's what this kid said when they tracked him down. Well, it was a TikTok challenge. I thought we'd be cool to do it. Fortunately, the homeowner wasn't armed. Yeah. The next burglar on Lemon Bluff. Uh, the victim is a power of attorney over the residence and stated he, it has been vacant for over a year. The victim arrived at the residence and observed the windows to be shattered and the house was ransacked. This was TOT over to CID. So we identified the juveniles and juveniles apparently when uh, their parents went and um, apologized in this case. Um, the victim initially did not want to prosecute. Uh, however, they decided they did want to prosecute. The juveniles are um, 14, I'm sorry, 15, and they're both 15 years old. Um, we sent to the state. Um, state did not want to give us a warrant because they don't, uh, they don't score high enough, but we are filing with them. So eventually they're going to get into um, a juvenile program, I'm assuming, at some point. Carla? Um, being that the system is down, I don't know. Okay, that. okay, I forgot about that. <laughs> Uh, the next burglary on West Elston. Uh, the victim orders steak and shake via DoorDash. Uh, the victim advised the suspect deliver her food, forgot some stuff as they were speaking. The suspect was standing in the doorway of her residence and then decided to grab her breast. Uh, CID did a really great job on this, tracking the, this guy down and able to get an arrest on this case. This was a really good job by CID. Mr. Roja is from Orlando. He was delivering uh, for DoorDash. And uh, we had video surveillance. He shows up at the house. Um, there's an issue with her order. At some point, uh, the victim retrieves into her house, and he follows her behind, uh, sticks his hand on the doorway, and proceeds to grab, to grab her breasts. Um, the victim told him no numerous times and closed the door behind. Um, like I said, we, we did facial recognition with him. VC3 did a great job. And we contacted DoorDash. They gave us information pretty quick. He was fired on the spot after we told him what happened. And we eventually arrested him. He, he came back from Orlando to give a statement and ended up going to jail. We tried to follow up to see if this guy, how many other delivery places he's worked and everything else. Clearly, something's not right here with this guy. And it talk, talk about after he left, he just came back in, he could have peered into her window. Yes. And he, went, he, he said something. We couldn't, we couldn't decipher what he was telling her. But basically, he was probably telling her to, hey, open the door. I want to come in. Um, let's, let's party or something like that. OK. The next burglar we have on 1130 Pearl Tree Road. Uh, this is going to be related to a case uh, that's further down. Um, as well. So the defendant broke into several vehicles. This is the uh, case that um, is a little bit further down. Uh, upon And fled upon fl uh, flight of the deputy. So the deputies came around. He ran off. We were able to uh, apprehend him at this moment. So once we've arrested him for the two uh, vehicle burglaries, uh, it was later discovered that this defendant had also burglarized a nearby house under construction. So once we got him for the vehicle burglaries, we were able to connect him to other crimes that he had committed there recently. So these were, he was uh, arrested for all of these cases. Uh, the next, what we have is a, a DV robbery, which was a, essentially their, uh, what we call Nina robberies, where if a, ma a husband and wife get in an argument and they grab their cell phone, which under state statute, it's not, a, it's not we wouldn't charge them with robbery, but because of how uh, uh, UCR and how the federal regulations are, it still classifies as it. So it has to be categorized as that. Um, he took the cell phone while they're arguing. So that's why it's there. That we do have a warrant uh, for his arrest on this. We're just waiting to apprehend him at the moment. Uh, the next motor vehicle theft, uh, this was determined to be unfounded. Um, they brought the vehicle in for maintenance and no one told the other lady. So. That worked out well. Uh, next, we have some uh, shoplifting and thefts, which is going to bring us to uh, page 12. So we have a theft from a motor vehicle on Fruitland. Uh, the victim advised her Florida license plate was stolen um, sometime in early February. We have not been able to find any uh, 
uh, find the license plate at this moment or it has not hit any of our uh, LPRs. Um, so the next page uh, is a theft motor vehicle from Urbana. This is not gonna be related to anything else, but the deputies responded to the address provided uh, to report a car break in progress. Uh, this is TOT and over to CID. Like Captain said, this is not gonna be related to the trend. Uh, we don't have any video surveillance. Um, we did get some fingerprints. Uh, we're still waiting on um, LPU for the results. Um, we are looking into Avery Reyes, the one that we arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if the fingerprints come back there. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, the next uh, weapons law violation at West Crow Park, uh, deputies responded to a call of a shooting. Uh, upon arrival, arriving to the scene, multiple witnesses advised there was uh, younger males in the back of the park with rifles and handguns. Let me show a video of this. Um, the deputies got on scene very quick, were able to uh, lock it down and start getting information. Now, we have these videos on our system, Fusis, and because we were able to retrieve it so fast, was probably one of the key things that helped us solve this case as fast as we did. If we didn't have access to these vehicle, or excuse me, uh, these videos, um, we may still be trying to figure out who good. these kids are. So this is why it's so imperative that we get access to these videos or your guys' video system as, as soon as we can. So everything was done immediately through our real-time crime center. They were able to pull it up, look, get it out to the deputies, and this was solved. So with the uh, cameras that we have out there in the parks, are they sufficient enough to help you, or do you feel like there should be some kind of upgrade on them? So the ones that we have access to are great. There's some parks that we don't have access. I've been working with the city manager and we're trying to get that squared away so they can get into our system, but we just, some of them just aren't compatible. To give you this incident that occurs here, the white guy in the video. The gun on his person, uh, nine millimeter. Uh, initially they, they claimed that, you know, they were at the park, some guy showed up with a rifle, pointed at them, and they, they fired back. So they were arrested for the weapon violations, being juveniles. CID went there, detectives did a search warrant on the house, tried to recover the other gun, um, and uh, found another gun, not related, that was stolen at the land. And mom claimed that she had no idea that that gun was there, which it tells you, it shows you the, the level of parenting. Mm -hmm. um, mom claimed that the gun was uh, thrown in the lake. Our dive team went there calm the lake, uh, couldn't find the gun. And then eventually later on, we got the video, the first video we show, which shows the, uh, the, the white male getting robbed by the, the two uh, black juveniles. And one of our sergeants, uh, Dean is sergeant, he actually identified from the first video, he identified the, uh, the male, the white male, as Ethan Fontaine, um, having been dealing with them for, for a while. Um, so then uh, we found out that Ethan Fontaine was supposed to go uh, meet with the state attorney about the uh, Corvette case. At that point we had enough probable cause to arrest him um, because we did observe him with an AK style rifle. Uh, he goes in his car, takes the rifle, goes back there, and I I guess he got cold feet and didn't, didn't fire that gun, but uh, Eventually we arrested him. We did a search warrant on the house that he was staying at. We found the AK, um, was fully loaded. Um, all of them were charged. We recovered three firearms, one of them stolen. This was the day of the election. So you had, poll that was a polling place going on when this, not the ring camera that showed the juveniles coming in the car and then going inside. So that's the case that you're referring to. So to answer your question, ring cameras help all the time. What? Help all the time. Uh, so uh, for the crime, uh, for this, this, that ends it out. But for also uh, for our traffic and motor units that we have for this past month, uh, they've also worked 74 crashes. Um, 646 citations were written. That's just with the unit. This is not with uh, every deputy. So more than that, probably closer to well over a thousand citations were written just this past month um, in the city of Deltona. Um, and 49. Atlas one. Atlas one. That's Air one. 
Oh. Atlas One. Atlas One. That's Air One. Oh. Uh, is it Atlas? Atlas One is Air One. Oh. That, so that, that, that you're getting Air Ones transmissions on that. Right. Okay. And it was just binging away. Um, and it was a lot of life history. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the Merrimack is where we had the issues. We had, uh, car, we had to go to that group of car breaks there. It's not to that group of juveniles that we're working on. Yes, yeah, so we'll, and when stuff like this happens, we do try to put some pressure on it because we don't want it to happen again. We don't want retaliation. So you're going to see a uh, presence in that area. You're going to see more stops. You're going to see more police activity. And, and I'm not complaining. I, I like the fact that there are a lot of stops. It's just that it seems to me that this past two months has like increased. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of my neighbors, when they see me, they stop me and want to know what's going on. I mean, I tried to. Ex well, the helicopter does patrol flights too. So, um, the helicopter will routinely fly over you know areas that the captains may say, "Hey, I've had, I've had a problem over here." Um, so the, health, the pilots will know to fly that area, um, and that's preventative. So that, that may be why you see that on that app. It's usually stops and arrests and stuff like that, and they'll tell you stay away from the area and stuff like that's, that. Let me go to the app setting. That how we go to set because it, it can show you traffic stops. It can show you a. It shows you everything board. we're doing. Yeah, exactly. And and since we have become fully staffed. You know, there's more, there's more activity. Like Easter weekend, we put 20 deputies out here, and they were told to go out and do traffic. They were told to do extra patrols. They were, they, Carla put together a juvenile probation parole hit team to go out and check every kid that was on a curfew to make sure they were actually actually home. So there's increased activity. It's not, it's not so much there's increased crime. It's so much there's increased proactive policing is what we're doing. I mean, it's important that you got 20 deputies for free. I paid for that for the whole weekend. Well, it's good to hear that. I'll tell that out loud. <laughs> um, so Rock Hill seems to be a big problem. Um, can you give me a little update on that? If is it uh, family still there, or did they move out, or? Um, I'm not sure if they're still there. We're still looking at that area. Uh, we're, we're we're trying to slow down any issues that we have. Uh, a lot of this is just coming into the summer because we know the summer is going to increase because the kids aren't at school. So with that being said, we're, we're trying to uh, curtail it before that happens, before other issues starts arriving. But we, we have something planned for this summer as well, but we're, we're definitely going to keep an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't get out of hand. So we're, we're continuing to uh, look into it. Right, because a lot of uh, parents you know, have been telling me that they would like more um, eyes on Fireman's Park. Mm -hmm. okay. And, you know, that's where we've been getting most of these teenagers hanging out and causing problems. So parents are afraid to bring their kids. I mean, we upgraded this park for the for the children and they can't use it because these teenagers are out there causing these problems. What kind of technology do we have in there? Uh, Farmers Park, I'm not too sure if that's on our system. On we Fuses. have cameras there, but I don't know. Uh, I'll have to check if that one fuses. I don't, I'm not too sure well, if it we'll is get, or not. We'll get with your IT. Um, I know there's only a few that are in the city. So if it's if it's not, I'll uh, I'll see what we can do to to try to get that one on it. I'll talk with the uh, city Please, manager. Come upgrade upgrade it and get it on our system. Will be the two big things that'll be extremely helpful. Okay. I I do know we have cameras, Fireman's Park. There there are but, uh, cameras in a lot of the like like I said earlier. There's a cameras. Most of the parks have cameras. It's just if it's compatible to be with our system. Some doesn't have Wi-Fi in that area, so it can't be on our Fusa system if there's no Wi-Fi on the camera systems. So. It's just that we have to wait and get with somebody here the next day, depending on what happens. If it's the weekend, it may be a Monday, so we can download a video and see what happened in that park. So that's why I'm really trying to push to get these cameras updated so we can get them on our system so we have immediate access to it and we can solve it immediately, as opposed to waiting that time. Thank you. We need people to call us, though. Like, if they're at the park, mm -hmm. they're not supposed to do, you got to tell them. they got to call us. If they call us, they're going to come or address it. Even if it's a hundred times. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of drug action out there, too, on that park, so, call, yeah. see something, smell something, whatever, they got to call us. Well, we're definitely working on, I know the captain and his staff are working with the city manager for all the parks with cameras and where there's no Wi-Fi trying to figure out a way that we can get that footage. I mean, clearly, you know, we knew who the suspects were because the cameras were so good. And, you know, we 
to access that right away in real time. That, that's a huge deterrent. Oh, then again, 15-year-olds with guns, how do you deter them? They really just don't give a shit. So, Eric, do you want to talk about the, what's going on with Daltona drug-wise and what we're seeing county-wide? Uh, sure, Sheriff. Um, good evening, Mike. I'm Eric Dietrich, Captain of uh, Special Investigation Services. Uh, for the first three months of the year, the, uh, the Deltona Enforcement Narcotics Team has completed 45 narcotics cases, made 23 narcotics arrests, and seized almost $41,000 worth of methamphetamine, cocaine, and uh, fentanyl. We've um, had two incidents of uh, non-fatal overdoses, um, one on West Embassy, one on Providence, where we were able to actually get into those houses after the overdose and arrest the individuals inside after executing search warrants at those residents. Uh, for the city of Deltona, um, the overdose deaths for the first uh, year to date um, are at four, which is down 42% from the same time period of last year where there were seven, and the overdoses, non-fatal overdoses are down 35%, which are at 30. And last year, at the same time period, we're at 46. So I believe our efforts, along with the overdose task force that we've established, are, are working. Um, comparing those numbers to countywide numbers, to, to give you a comparison, um, Deltona having four deaths year to date. Countywide, we've seen 60 uh, year to date, which is also down from last year's into some numbers, which was 76. So that's a 21% reduction. And overdoses countywide are at 359, which is down 20% from last year, where we are at 451. So I believe our efforts of targeting the fentanyl dealers and the follow up we've had with overdoses um, by the Overdose Task Force are uh, making a difference. Thank you. Carla, I know we've been having trouble with the Department of Juvenile Justice. Is, uh Website has been down for like 10 days, but you want to talk about what we saw during spring break, what we're seeing with these kids with guns, the new law, it's going to help us out a lot. During spring, during spring break, um, we had um, several uh, kids just drinking, underage drinking. That was the biggest thing we saw the first week of spring break. The second week of spring break, as you saw in your area, we had a lot of gun activity. And sadly, guns are just as, as popular as a piece of bubble gum now. Every kid can get a gun. They tell us that they can buy them off the internet. Um, if you believe him, that was the one, the one, which kid told us that, that he ordered, he purchased it off of? Uh, he purchased it off of um, Instagram. Facebook, Instagram. From a kid in Deland. The, one of the shootings that we had, that we talked about in this report. So, I mean, it's very accessible to the kids, so. Um, there's a new juvenile law coming out effective July 1st. It hasn't been signed yet. I don't know the final language in it, but it's going to ho have more accountability, and the judges are going to have to really look at what they're doing with these kids. It's going to shift the onus onto the judge to explain why they're not holding these kids accountable. So if a kid comes in with a gun arrest and the judge decides to withhold adjudication, the first time the judge gets to do that, the second time the kid comes in with a gun or a violent crime, if the judge does it again, the judge has to explain to the prosecutor, the sheriff, and the victim why you're, why you're doing this. And judges don't like the right. What about the parents? They're, that's something that's still languishing out there. Holding. And obviously, if they could prove, you could prove the nexus that the parent was negligent and the kid got the gun from that. But if the kid's running the streets at 4 o'clock in the morning, as we have, and they hit that car handle, there's a gun in it, and they go do other breaks, and they're charged with armed burglary. They're, you know, why's your kid out at 4 o'clock, and why's your 13-year-old at 4 o'clock in the morning? We didn't get any traction with that, and working with the legislature to hold the parents accountable on that end. Although there was a huge push from the Sheriff's Association to say, we have to be able to do something. Your kid doesn't belong out there at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, have minors, I mean, I, I would assume. You know, I mean, my mom was super nosy every single time. Hey, your butt has to be here by this time. And boy, if I was at home, right. I got my ass whooped. Right. The car Times have changed. The kids are running the household. Kids are running the household, exactly right. I mean, we, we saw that with spring break. I mean, you know, the parents are, you know, I let my kid drink in, in the house. How dare you arrest my kid? Well, your, your kid, pardon my expression, is goddamn 16 years old, and he ain't drinking, you know, out on our beach. It's not going to happen. So get your ass over here and pick him up. And then we have kids with corporate. American Express cards. Uh, we 
did have an entrepreneurial group that came over. They stopped by Sam's Club. Uh, they had an adult buy like 15 cases of Twisted Tea. And then they went and sold the 15 cases driving around spring break. They weren't drinking. They were entrepreneurial. They were selling the cans that cost two and a quarter. They were selling them for 10 bucks. But the parents were appalled that, what, well, why were you arresting them for? They didn't do anything wrong. Right. Exactly. They're 15 and 16 in possession alcohol. I almost got beat up the last time I brought this up, but I'm going to bring it up again. <laughs> Not by us. Yes. I um, almost got handcuffed. Um, what should the city do to bring back and enforce the curfew that we have, you guys, that we never have you guys en enforced? You have to pass the ordinance, and you have to have a remedy for the person to appeal. They're the two components you have to have. You can pass the ordinance, you have a curfew, but then there has to be a mechanism in place for somebody to appeal and say, I shouldn't have got this. That's the two things you have to do. And once you do that, you know, we lock them up to loitering and proud. That's what we do. If they're out and they're wandering around somebody's driveway or they're dressed all in black and they have rubber gloves on, and we can make that charge, that's the charge that we make. Because when we come across them, that's what they're out there doing. They're not out hanging on the corner and we're getting phone calls that, hey, these kids are hanging out there and you need to do something about it, and then you would use the curfew. When we get involved or get the call, they're going checking door handles, they're in people's backyards, and that's the charge we apply. We, we lock them up for that. So I know we have the ordinance. You don't have, it, according to our attorney, you don't have an appeals mechanism to it. Okay. All ordinances, and I'm not an attorney on this, all ordinances have to have an appeal mechanism. So whatever ordinance any city puts into place, there has to be a way for a person to appeal that ordinance. Just like code enforcement, just like you have a code board, mm -hmm. there has to be a mechanism to appeal that ordinance violation. Okay, I think we need to look into that um, because it seems to me like these kids are just going bananas over here. And like I said, it's not that we get a call, like I'll date myself, when I was a kid, you hung out at the corner store. There might have been 50 of us. And then they call the cops, and the cops come swooping in, and you got locked up for a curfew ordinance, which you weren't doing anything but hanging out there past 11 o'clock at night. That's not what we see here. The kids that are out here, they're not hanging in it. They're out committing crimes. So the curfew ordinance is, is really, it's a, it's a status offense. You can't do anything other than call the parents and tell them to pick them up. But I think if, the, if I'm not mistaken, and we'll, we have to look at that ordinance, but I think in that city ordinance, it holds the parents. You had something in there about finding the parents. Exactly. Which again, you need a, a appeal mechanism in there. Right. And, and, and my understanding from our guy, our Peter, was that there's no, there's no appeal mechanism in there. Okay. So. Is, it, is it, I don't mean to interrupt you, is it, is it yes, because what I'm seeing is, I mean, I'm seeing two kids, you know, going after another one in plain daylight. Right. It, I mean, so it's not only a curfew issue, we, we just, I don't know. I mean, the, the, Maybe Carla has better answers. The you. answer in the, in the park, that, that, what time of day was that? Where the kid fires the shot and pistol whips the other kid. That was yeah, like was 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right? Middle of the day. Yeah, it was 5 o'clock. And the shooting in, uh, at, the, at the polling place, that was five. That was 6.30, right? It was just before the polls closed. That was like 6.30. Broad daylight, people went inside the park. Maybe. So it's not that it, it's, you know, the, the car breaks are, the majority of car breaks are at night. But the violent crime we're seeing is happening during the daytime hours. I mean, it, we, we were out there the other day. It was out there on the, the Saturday, the day before Easter. You got two 15-year-old kids, brother and sister, never been arrested before, think it's a good idea to break into Friendship Elementary School. Pull apart the fence, they slide under the fence, and they start checking the door handles to the, to the school. There happened to be a teacher on campus. And the parents are like, I don't understand this. It's 2.30 it's in the afternoon. They went out to ride their bikes. You know, and they're good kids. They've never been in trouble before. The parents were, 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 I think they would have beat the shit out of them if we let them. But nothing better to do than go onto the property and start trying all the classroom doors. And you say, why? And, the, and these are good kids. I mean, their parents were pissed. So I don't know the answers. And Carl will tell you some of the stuff we see coming through that door. Uh, some of it are kids just being kids. They do stupid shit. Other things, it's like the parents are screaming at her, and giving her bloody hell for the, why? How dare you lie? Like the, the kid drinking? They, 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 we live in Windermere. I don't care where you live. 
You know, let everyone don't give two shits what you let your kid do inside your home in Windermere, but it's not going to happen here. So, we'll talk about some of the new technology. Do Paul, you want to talk about Nibins or what we're seeing on your end? Absolutely. Um, Nibin, the National Integrated Ballistic Index System, is uh, all the guns that we come in contact with, uh, process with the latents, uh, fingerprints, also for DNA. And then, and then we have a uh, brass tracks machine, which is connected directly to the ATF, where the shell casings are then uh, sent up and they have um, acquisitioners up there that look at them and see if they match any other casings. Uh, in the uh, shooting at the park case, um, uh, within an hours, our crime scene unit processes the guns that are recovered and then puts them into the ATF system. And um, that came back to two Sanford cases. Uh, I think it was late 2022 and the 2023 case where shell casings were located at two different shooting cases um, in their AOR. Uh, so now they have active leads to work those cases. Um, we processed 155 uh, guns just in the first quarter of this year, uh, with probably about nine leads to different agencies and cases. So, you know, the, the ghost guns, what are we seeing from the uh, ghost guns? Have we seen a lot of those coming for us? N no, we haven't. No, there hasn't been a large amount to speak of. They do come through here and there. They are guns that are untraceable. You can, you can print them off of a 3D printer. You can print different... No Parts. serial numbers. There's no serial numbers, no nothing. And the other one we're seeing is, who's the guy we just grabbed with the, uh, oh God, he was printing the, yeah. The trigger modification? Yeah. yeah. To make they fully the, automatic. For $2.50, you could turn a, a semi-automatic weapon into a fully automatic weapon. For $2.50. Drug case, right? Piece that goes into it. We, did, who was, we just did something yeah, with that, right? Uh, drug case. Uh, did you guys? Yeah, um, with the sear, yeah, the, yeah, it's not coming up. Okay. Well, I just before I forget, I just want to um, let you know that Edgewater sends a lot of thank yous for a case that was resolved there, a drug case. So, Edgewater just condos? wanted to put it out there. Edgewater condos. Um, yes, I know we've uh, addressed and been in there and conducting surveillance. Actually, I have the, our DNet supervisor, Sergeant, Sergeant Wool, here that can speak to that. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, we did conduct a lot of surveillance there. We made a uh, 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 We did conduct a lot of surveillance there. We made a couple arrests of subjects leaving there for possession. Um, the last time I spoke to the condo manager, she said they sold the condo on March 13th, so they have since vacated. I just want to say thank Problem you. Problem solved. There you go. Exactly. Uh, uh, Eric, can you do me a favor and get with the mayor about Sunday morning? See what we need help with the, with the race. I'll be out there around 9. So, uh, anybody got anything to add? What's that? Oh, that was in the back room. No, thank you. Thank you. you guys got anything back there you want to add? We're good. We just didn't know when it was to stop, though. You, Eric, you want to touch on training real quick? Yeah. About what's, what's going on with the academy and what we're seeing? Scott, uh, Scott, Todd, I'm going to give you a chance with schools to talk about what's going on. Hey, good, good morning, Eric Egan. Uh, I'm the Volusia Sheriff's Office Training Commander. Um, we were just recognized last month as a uh, nationally accredited agency. We received the TRIARC Award, so we're accredited as a law enforcement agency, we're accredited as a communication center, and we're also accredited as our training academy. Um, we're one of three in the state that's nationally accredited, and 30 internationally, I believe you said, Sheriff? Yeah, 30 between the yeah, RPA. Yeah. Right. Um, as, as far as our training academy goes, we've got uh, uh, 11 students that are actually uh, starting their field phase. We also um, have uh, an academy class that is actually in the, the, uh, the law enforcement academy training, and uh, they're due to graduate May 23rd. Um, let's see, we, we've got our seventh law enforcement academy class that is scheduled to start June 10th. And right now we've got 16 deputy re recruit applicants that are processing to be hired. Um, we've also got uh, nine that have previous law enforcement experience that are processing to be hired. And. Um, 
we've got uh, 10 that uh, will be, be hitting the road this week. And then we've got uh, one additional that'll be hitting the road in about three weeks. So um, we're doing a lot of great things out there. We, uh, in addition to that, we do uh, all our in-service and advanced and specialized training. Thank you. Todd, I had a one-hour meeting the other night, 15 hours. It was exciting. Even, Riveting. Even your commission meetings have got wow, 15 hours. Uh, so I'm Captain Todd Smith. I'm the commander of the Youth Services Section. I'm also the school safety specialist for Volusia County Schools. So this quarter, um, the Family Resource Center processed 523 juveniles. We did 304 in custody or walk-up arrests, which is out by the jail. 57 sex offender checks. And one of the things that we've been doing in the schools is really um, pushing training for all our SRDs. So obviously we got SRDs in all our middle schools and high schools throughout all of Deltona as well. That was a, a huge achievement and accomplishment, so we're ex extremely excited about that. And we, this quarter, we did hostage rescue training, entry techniques, threshold assessments, discretion, discretion, distractionary. distractionary. Sorry, I didn't want to come off my tongue there. Entries, shoot, don't shoot scenarios, and the phases of active killers. So we're really making sure that our deputies and our guardians and our SROs all have the correct mental mindset in that type of a scenario. And then when we get into any other scenario, we're making sure that we're really pushing de-escalation and making sure that they have the correct mental mindset to deal with uh, students with disabilities and ADA type stuff. Um, so one of the things that we've done recently is we joined the Compliance Committee for the State of Florida through the uh, School Safety Specialists. And it's a committee of people from around the state that work together to make sure that we have a firm understanding of all the things that we need to do for compliance. And part of that is we created the stirrup standards. So when you look at a building and you, you see all the different things that are in it for how to prevent a fire, right? So you have the sprinklers, you have the exit signs, if you notice, the doors open out instead of in so that when you run out of them, you don't smash your face into the door. Um, all the things that protect the kids, these walls are made out of concrete instead of wood. You know, so we're starting to try to create standards the same the way that the fire department did many, many years ago of things that are achievable goals to make the schools safer where the school itself protects the kids. So we're not asking the teachers to pick up a hose and fight the fire. You know, the same thing with uh, any kind of a threat that comes onto our campuses is that the school itself provides the protection. So I think that's ultimately where we're gonna try to get, and, and that's that's what we're looking at right now is our long-term plan, so. The mayor asked a question earlier about kids with guns, parents don't really talk about what happened yesterday. Yeah, so one of the things that we really push is training through Fortify Florida for all the kids. So that's a tip line, it's like Crime Stoppers, but for kids. And we make sure that they know how to make tips. What happens if they make a false tip, they get in big trouble. So yesterday we got a tip at Atlantic High School that a kid had a gun on campus and that it was in his car. So we immediately sent teams to where the kid were and then teams to where the car was to make sure that we could isolate the threats. We got the kid, searched him, no weapons, searched the car, found a Glock 43 inside the car and ultimately took him into custody. And so it was his dad's gun. It was his dad's gun. That he knew was in the car. And was bragging about he had a gun on campus. So to get to your point about having guns. That's it. Why is it to start the name? I don't think they get they get that. Okay, so uh I didn't know if I should share that or not. So <coughs> Lieutenant Stirrup, uh, she actually did the majority of the manual, making sure that it was ready to go to be rolled out through the state. And then obviously it goes through a series of checks to make sure that there's no mistakes, grammatical mistakes or anything like that. So because of all the work that she did, I specifically asked him to call them the Stirrup standards so that she could get credit could for get the, the credit. She could, could get, get the credit. credit. By, right. by not telling everybody the story behind so. what she did. All that <laughs> hard work. <laughs> That's the real story. That's the story behind the stirrup <laughs> standards. So. Is there anything we can do as a city to, I mean, aside from the cameras, obviously that's something you're already getting with the city manager on, but what do you guys need to say? Number one, stay safe. No more. Because you guys want to go back to your families. But what else are you guys? 
Uh, well, I mean, the training that we get with the agency is 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 what pretty much keeps us safe. So, I mean, we're we're doing really good with that. Our sergeants train uh, during shift. There's some downtime. They'll come out there and they'll do some of their own training. Um, so we're constantly doing that to make sure that we're we're doing everything we need. Um, there there was a couple things uh, during some of the budget meeting I was going to talk about. I know there's a couple LPR positions that we were looking at, uh, license plate readers that we like in the city. Uh, we have several, but there's a couple other holes that we'd like to fill. Um, and because they're in the city, we're going to come to you. So that pretty much that's our big thing right now. And this is the stuff when I spoke to the sergeants, this is what the deputies want. So they're like, yeah, if we could have it here, it'd be great because we'll be able to see if their people are coming. We can, you know, we will be able to solve crimes better. And this is the deputies asking for this stuff. It's not us going like, well, hey, you need to look at it here. It's them wanting to solve the crimes. So I think it's a big, you know, it's a big, uh, uh, congratulations to them just wanting to come out here and solve crimes. So right now that's pretty much our biggest uh, thing besides the cameras, obviously. Carl's got an ask. She always has an ask mayor, so you guys can know. I gave her an, an unlimited budget last year and she exceeded it. <laughs> we, de <laughs> we desperately need programs for teens. You guys have the largest population. We have a lot of kids in the community and there are no programs. And an idle mind is a devil's playground, and that's why you're seeing what you're seeing. There's nothing for these kids to do here. There's nothing. I mean, parents tell us that all the time. There's no... Suggestions? No. I mean, they just want programs, and the thing about it is, I don't know how your city is set up. I know some city programs are considered an enterprise fund, and, you know, they want the parents to pay, but a lot of these parents can't pay, so I don't know if they're subsidized funding or something. But we have to find something for these kids to do. That might be something you might want to work uh, workshop. So, in all defense to the city, we have a lot of sports going on. Yes, there is a charge, but I believe we also have scholarship. Um, and I'm not sure if these parents are coming and trying to find out what kind of sports the city has for minors, right? Right, um, right now, we're looking to a possibility. And when I got there, there's four cars in the driveway. And I mean, even one parent said to me, well, who's paying my gas for this? I'm sorry, this is your child. And who's paying my gas to come and bring him to your house? So parents also need to get involved, and we do. If you go to West Cloud Park, the room is full of parents. And these are parents that are really, really interested in their children. And yes, we have to keep them involved, but we also need their input. We need them to be part of whatever the city has. And not everything, as we all know, has a salary behind it. Right. Right? You have to volunteer for your children. So if parents have any ideas, they can bring them to the city and we'll listen. Parks and recs. I mean, these people are awesome. They're always uh, having summer camps, uh, field trips on during the summer. We have Catalyst. I don't know if everybody is uh, familiar with Catalyst. We have a summer program for Catalyst members that come and do internship here. And they're part of the group that takes teenagers and kids to trips. So we're trying, Parks and Rex is doing a great job of bringing up all these sports. But if the parents think that there's other things we can do, bring it up to us. We'll bring, you know, I mean. Do you guys have, like, I know other counties have the, the youth ranch? We do, we have, the youth ranch gives us one week just for which kids. Okay. So, and obviously the kids who work in, some type of delinquency to get to go out there. So the youth ranch is up on 40 in Barberville. And it's 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 slammed. Like you said, it's slammed all, all summer long. It's a good program. I will thank you, though, for your support that you give us. I mean, since I've been the sheriff, the support that comes from that dais has been amazing. And we all appreciate that. It makes it so much fun to work in place when the elected body is sitting there and they're supporting law enforcement and wanting us to do a better job and giving us resources to do a better job. It, it is a pleasure to do that.
And it's, I think that um, also your involvement, the fire department's involvement also brings them out. Um, I mean, as all, most of you know, I grew up in New York City and we always saw uh, baseball, basketball, and different games, the youth of the community versus our police department, our fire department, and, and that brought up a lot of uh, teenagers in it made them mingle with our sheriff's department in civilian clothing, right? So they got to hang out with you as a civilian and have more respect for you when they saw you in your uniform. Um, so maybe we can talk about some, you know, bringing some sports and and stuff um, with the fire department. And they have too much time on their hands. They work out all the time. Who? The fire department. No, they'll, they'll get involved. First, even when we had the, the, the wig out night, they were in the back lifting weights. <laughs> Play dodgeball. We played dodgeball with them, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, we have a gym upstairs if you want to go lift weights. Um, but while I'm, while I'm talking, I also just want to let you guys know that the city of Deltona has uh, nominated the um, sheriff's department and the fire department for the Valor Award uh, for the uh, Hispanic uh, Chamber's Valor Award ser uh, service. And it's going to be happening next week. Um, so, you know, we look forward to hoping that you get the award. They, everybody get, rec gets recognized and receives certificates, but we're pushing and hoping that you guys get the award itself. Um, well, we'll be inviting you to ours on June 4th, because we're honoring the fire department as well at our annual. Oh, I thought you were going to honor us. Yeah. So, and we have an open bar. Is it open bar? Is it open bar? Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? News General Center. Oh, okay. For you, it'll be open bar. Just being enough to pay. American Express. I'll put it up right. <laughs> Everybody's got the American Express. You don't drink that. <laughs> Friends. Bring a friend. So, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You guys have a great day. Thank Can I just also make one more announcement? I'm sorry. Sure, go And ahead. I, I don't think we're going to have another Comstop meeting before this happens. May 27th is Memorial Day. And uh, the city of Deltona is partnering with VEMA. VEMA is a motorcycle group that whose members are former law enforcement, firefighters, and veterans. And so they have teamed up, and first responders, they have teamed up with the city of Deltona. We're going to have an event right here. And they're going to have a, have a motorcycle ride, um, thanks to the sheriff's department. Um, your motorcycle group is going to escort them. Um, about a 45 minute to an hour ride around the city of Deltona. They're gonna make a stop at the Veterans um, Museum, a Veterans Park, and then it's gonna end up here where we're gonna have, or they're gonna have a nice event with live music and stuff like that. If you're a biker, you can sign up online to ride along with them. Um, it's gonna be our first and hopefully not there's going to be future more. Uh, uh, Chitwood is going to be one of our guest speakers representing the side of the law enforcement. Uh, Captain Schneider, uh, Chief Schneider is going to be the representative of the fire department. And Lori from Florida Health, um, she's a veteran. Uh, she's going to be a guest speaker speaking on behalf of the veterans. Everyone's invited to attend and, and you know share the fun with us. You said motorcycle, not bicycle. Well, you could be on the motorcycle, on their uh, bike, but I don't know how you're going to be at the fast. end. I hear he's fast. Yeah, only when I'm being chased by something. I don't know. He got hit twice, so, you know, we don't want Deltona to be the they third. I have a supposedly a, a ride with Chip with Dave for the Mayor's Fitness Challenge. And somebody already told me, you know the sheriff's been hit twice. I'm like, so it's just... Stay on the bike path. We're good. But you can ride on the uh, fire state, fire uh, truck, which is camouflage with the veterans. Never. <laughs> Never. 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 <laughs> Thank you, guys. Mayor? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay. Because they